Hello, <clears throat> welcome to Aviaga's Dancing Hut, the Witch Hunters. So, last session, bit of a mad one, but every session's been mad. I can't, can't seem to stop spiraling out of control. It's, things are definitely getting uh, interesting. Yes, that's a good word, Derek. Interesting. So, how did this go down last session? You had made the night hags within Aviaga's chambers flee in terror. From the blinding light, your holy symbol raised on high, Atana. They seem to disappear into different corners or into the ethereal plane itself. The one that Grizz was hunting down had vanished once again. <clears throat> At least you now have a face and a name. You know exactly who's responsible for these nightmare hauntings. And as you kind of decided best to kind of move along get some rest it'd been a long rolling day uh, you returned back to your guest quarters and set up the tiny hut well started to set up the tiny hut but before you went to bed you thought let's try and sort this amulet out this or this brooch rather because it's been causing a lot of problems for both Grizz and now ember it seems to be like a spreading curse and it seemed to exact it seemed to happen at the exact moment Ember touched it. So <clears throat> now sort of trying to coax Grizz to give Tyra the actual uh, brooch. It took a while, but he eventually trusted him. And he began a process of identifying what this thing was. It was... It used to be a brooch of protection, or, or shielding rather. And now it seems to have been warped. It, you can tell that a great amount of transmutation magic has warped it. The properties have now enhanced it, but it comes with a curse as well. It's both good and bad in a way, but the curse is one that's afflicted upon by touch. It seems to gr give the um, person the curse of avarice, which is an insatiable, extreme greed, and it's specifically for gold. Now. You know, in removing curses, normally you can sort of break someone free from that item, but it will not break the curse on this actual magical item. That will still be a cursed thing. So if anyone was to gain their possession of it again, they could fall under it. To, to actually break the curse, you realize you will need to go back through the root, through the cause. That cauldron was the thing that seemed to make this and therefore you would need to go back there and figure out more information. And Tyra does recall seeing books kind of splayed out. Different experiments have been used on these things. Different combinations of items. Perhaps other magical items here are also cursed, but yet to be seen. Anyway, um, I think you gave it back to Grizz in the end. Is that correct? Yep. Yep, okay. So Grizz, you've got it again. And Ember's still afflicted by this curse. Uh, whilst everyone was kind of in this room trying to figure out what was happening, because Grizz was beating on the dome, <laughs> trying to get back in, uh, Ember had slipped away. He too had been cursed, but of a different nature. He went into the menagerie and sought out poor Senra, lying, or rather sitting, looking very, looking very worse for wear. These kind of like weird black spikes have been growing out of his back. And then Ember asked to see, um, asked to see him, asked to actually go inside, and uh, Shale permitted it. But as soon as you were in, Ember took a strange turn, trying to comfort Sinrith and tell him that uh, that Sinvala still cared for him and that he he she was back and uh, that she loved him very much. As he started to draw out the dagger. From beneath his uh, cloak, or his poncho rather, <laughs> and then Senra's kind of looking at you with a confused expression, though hard to read him with this kind of strange metal mask over his face. Uh, you knew that kind of whispering would not stop until you ended another's life. You plunged the dagger straight into his throat. That is when all hell started breaking loose. Senra fell. Uh, well, sorry, slumped in his chair and started bleeding this kind of blackish blood. At that point, Dyer had been searching for you, you, Ember, and finally entered into the menagerie, 
to see this kind of this murder take place and you you rushed over to the to the now bleeding out Sinrith as Ember was kind of screamed dragging and <laughs> yeah dragged kicking and screaming into another cell and you could tell there was something weird happening on the wound claws pulling itself free these shadowy tendrils tearing his body from like head to toe kind of splitting him in half almost and these tendrils started to reach out scraping the ceiling and uh, you realized it was time to run it was time to get out of there uh the weirdest phenomena was probably the fact that everything started to kind of go this monotone color silence started to fill the air and even magic seemed to be slowly fading like becoming i guess nulled nullified and ember's chambers the the barriers on all the doors of the menagerie start to kind of like fade away releasing everything in there as well as this shadowy demon which immediately jumped onto shale uh, he tried to like slam his fist into it but it kind of like passed through like an incorporeal form and as ember you kind of skirted pa- past it you saw these kind of black spikes shoot out not too dissimilar from the things you saw earlier it's like all the signs were there and yet you you just pushed on heedless of what may happen heedless of the consequences regardless you may actually get past them and only get grazed slightly uh you fled with the others tried to get them off their feet and tell them it was time to go and you rushed back into babiaga's quarters down a chute and ended up in the crystal caves uh here this kind of soft blue light suffused everything and a moment of calm brought back the party to uh to safety although grizz being the ever ex- <laughs> the ever uh i don't know blunker <laughs> she just decided to start start heading off um figuring out if there's anything interesting in this cave aside from the blue crystal and you found a weird illusionary wall you could feel the air kind of passing over you and as you phased through it you saw this beautiful crystal lake these stalactites uh seemingly like made of crystal on the ceiling dripping into it kind of causing these ripples across this crystal clear lake uh, crystal clear pool and as you saw your reflection also kind of rippling it kind of reached out towards you grabbed a hold of your hand and pulled you in everyone heard this kind of splash and thrashing town as everyone else poured in there too there you saw a, a, a second grizz pulling itself out of the water confusion and then sudden more illusions appeared as you kind of got closer to the edge of the water and, and all that battle began uh, where their illusions sort of emerged they were kind of like complete opposites of themselves they had this kind of evil streak in them it seemed and uh, you measured best them just got a bit hairy at one one or two points but every time you defeated one they exploded into a, a load of water and you headed back out at that point hearing um another person kind of entered into the caves it was none other than granny whitaker who's telling you that um or she she said that you'd seen some sort of inner demon hadn't you she seemed to know what was going on and she said that if you wish to learn more about your inner demons that uh, you could join her around the fire and witness well witness perhaps a vision and that's where we left off tara as you're kind of watching this fire crackle and burn she's she's pouring more of these kind of crystal blue geodes onto the fire pit like coals you're keenly aware that there's some sort of divination magic taking place here i think you actually had the prismatic lens at this point or would you would you just casting to take magic i can't remember either way I've... yeah it was just like magic before that's right okay uh the last thing you saw in that cave the crystal pool by the way was that the uh, magic was kind of fading away that too was divination and here again the fire is roaring up and you can see a bright aura around that fire and the strangest thing is kind of giving off a cold chill it's not like warming you this is a endothermic fire of some sort and you're, you're 
You're keenly aware of some of the dangers when looking into one's uh, inner thoughts or even future, past, present. Uh, most of the time, divination magic can give answers, give truths, but some more powerful ones, sometimes people are not ready to receive those visions. Sometimes, when peering into other worlds, Horrible mental afflictions can take hold. You can go insane. There are reports of wizards going mad, having seen something from the beyond that was not made for their eyes. But most of the time, divination magic is not really an offensive style of magic. It doesn't seek to harm. It seeks to understand. It seeks to find answers, truths, but Maybe the human mind should not know all, all truths. That's up to Tyra to decide, really. But you do know that there are potential dangers. And you've not really fully worked out how magic works here within the hut. So your, your own practices of divination might be different to what they are within the hut. But that's what you, you know as you're kind of pondering about whether to partake in this or whether to try and lead the others in because you've definitely more more experience with this than others so i'll let you guys talk amongst yourselves for a bit yeah i mean tyro is very like so, so, so what has granny Whitaker actually done so far at this point to the fire like is it roaring is it just sort of yeah before it was kind of this dull glow and now as she pours um more geodes on there it is starting to roar and she's trying to get it to a right sort of level it seems at this point she's got this gray staff that she's poking around with in the fire it's not burning the wood but you can tell she's kind of like positioning things almost like almost like the spell like augury where you can like place out bones or trinkets wow. she seems to be doing that with the fire pit i'll um I think Tyra's definitely got his notebook out because he had been trying to figure this, bef like figure out how this uh, sort of structure worked and all of that. Uh, and he's going to look over at Granny Whitaker and say, um, "You know, I see, I see that this is a very potent tool for divination. Uh, as you are probably aware, there's a." Uh, there's a, another one of those pretty nearby, and he'll indicate the wall towards the back of the cave where we found the divination pool. Uh, I don't suppose that this has any chance of producing similar kinds of problematic manifestations. Well, she smiles and says, well, this is much more of a controlled environment. I would say that when left unchecked, divination magic can take on many strange forms. This whole cave is brimming with it. These crystals, you see, still figuring out what gives them this magic, what suffuses them, but here in this cave seems to be the most potent area where the school thrives. But that... That phenomena, that anomaly you saw, I would say that's divination magic taking its own course. Trying to reach out, perhaps. Trying to gain uh. control. But this is a controlled environment. If there's any time you feel you're in danger, you may pull away from the vision. You will not be trapped, and I am here to oversee it. Anyone is under some duress. Uh, she looks at you, Ember. <laughs> <laughs> We're all looking at Ember. Yeah. I, I, I make eye contact with Tanner and Tyro, but I purposely avoid Grizz and Daya's vision. Mm. I, I avoid. I kind of look at, at actually, I guess Tyro. I look at, eh, eh. Hey, Tyro, uh, 
You think this That's is okay? Yeah, well, is, you know, one can never be too sure of these sorts of things, and you couldn't possibly offer any guarantees, but uh, I, I, I think Granny Whitaker is right when she says that uh, sometimes magic left to its own devices for long enough can produce problems, but uh, this doesn't seem... This seems like it is a co controlled environment. I I am looking forward to seeing what comes forth. Learning a little uh, more can is, is, is almost always a good thing. Can we, can we, can we learn from this uh, frame? Can we, can we, uh, I mean, fire teaches, but generally it's a more direct, uh, you know, uh, lesson. This, uh, this seems more uh, metaphysical. Yeah. Uh, uh, can we learn from for the, of the future? Can we learn of the past? Uh, how, well, of how course we can learn from the future. I mean, if if we didn't know what was coming, how would we plan for it? <laughs> Ember's brain just kind of... <laughs> uh, uh, it, uh, I, 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 I agree. Uh, it's good to plan. Uh, uh, very good. What if you don't have all the information? Uh, uh, Tanner! Uh, Tanner! Uh, Tanner. Oh. Can I insight check mm. Granny Whitaker as as yeah. uh, Tyro and, and Ember are having this little debate? Hundred percent. I want to I want to watch and see what she's reacting to. She's just remaining cordial and smiling. She's despite this kind of cold fire, she has got this warm sort of expression about her. Though there is, I don't know. Something disconcerting about, uh, like you he was heard Tyra mentioning, it will be safe, right? He was asking, he was pretty much double checking that it's going to be safe, not like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but is, it, an, is it the kind of weirdness that's all over the hut, or is it something mm, different? Oh, oh, for sure. It, although you're looking around, and out of everything so far, this is the one room that looks, I guess, the most unhut like. You could argue that the lake land was quite natural, yeah, though yeah. even Tyro started to figure out some of the weirdness in there. He didn't get a chance to relay that, though. But though that was an outside environment, it kind of still resembled the kind of forest outside of the hut. This is unlike anything else, and it doesn't even look like it should belong in the hut. But regardless, um, the last thing I'll say is that you, you have to kind of place your trust in her in order for this kind of thing to go through, but she's not directly doing anything. She's, in fact, at this point, she kind of notices you looking at her and says, I know your concerns, but I will not be doing any casting, no magic. This, she gestures to the fire, is all the magic you need to work with. I am really, sorry. Sorry, really here as a uh, overseer. I will not interfere with your visions. Your visions are your own. But perhaps I should give a small disclaimer. Ember, you mentioned <laughs> fires are physical. Your visions will feel real. They will feel like you are right there. Ah, oh, great. More curses. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've had uh, is enough there a of chance that, Is there a chance that activities within our vision could harm our uh, physical bodies? No. Not your bodies. Our minds? I cannot say what you will see. I cannot say what your futures hold. Or what your inner demons are seeking to, work, to accomplish. Everything in this chaotic place comes with a cost, a bargain of sorts, which I am, you know, quite pretty fond of, to be honest. But uh, at the same time, uh, it seems that some of these bargains aren't, are that, that the terms aren't laid out clearly. Uh, well, let's not lay them out clearly. Uh, what, 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 what cost? What, 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 what do we have to pay for this? Uh, I'm sick of these riddles and secrets. Uh, uh, driving me insane. I am also curious as to find out what you do within the hut. Granny Whitaker. He looks across and gives another warm smile and says, I find a comfort, a, a calmness, 
and a peace when I help others see or conquer their inner demons. Can I see if that is uh, forthright? Yeah. Yes, you okay. can. Uh, roll another insight check. Yes, please. Uh, might help if I open my character sheet. Oh, no. Oh, Sorry, right. no. your boy's got this. Natural oh, friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, boy. boy. So, Tana, you've read... She's evil! evil. <laughs> Demons. The way she's talking sounds as if she does get something from this. Ember just mentioned bargains and strange underhanded deals where... You think that you're getting something, but they're getting something in return as well. And it seems as though what she's talking about, getting a calm, a peace, she is being truthful. That much is clear. But what you're trying to comprehend here is something you're not quite aware of. It's something like she is getting something from this. Helping you guys helps her. What she needs help with specifically you're not sure, perhaps her own inner demons. You hadn't thought of that until now, until that natural 20. But yes, <laughs> that is a potential. She has her own demons. And that helping you guys, well, helps the demon? You kind of start to think, wait, demons are things that like, are they evil? First of all, that's your paladin knowledge. <laughs> and that they, they normally are chaotic evil they just hate each other as well they hate everything they will be self-serving and it doesn't it's not too far a stretch to say that if an inner demon saw another de another demon being conquered i guess that would still kind of make it happy in a way make it pleased but demons don't just do they feed off others emotions you're having all these ideas of swirling through your head could it be that she feeds on the other demons that are conquered that's I just an idea see. that kind of crosses through you wow so tana just kind of looks at granny whitaker just slightly cocked head just inquisitively my temperamental friend, Ember, does have a point. Everything in this hut has a, has a price. What is the price for this? What prices have others paid to see themselves as they are? Some... Some have seen their futures and then sought to change them. Some have seen their futures and abandoned their course. They left the hut. Some saw wow. what they were not ready for. They saw a dark path leading, stretching beyond them. They realized where their road would take them. And they changed course immediately. But who's to say that path was ever to be? It's a cost of your own. And what Wait, so you mean to say that, for instance, like, if someone hypotechnically have no idea who they are, and came, came on, like, looked into here, this far here, like, they can get answers and, like, figure out who they really are, or maybe who are they, where they came from and who they will be? Exactly, yes. Oh, okay, I, can I look? I, before... <laughs> Grizz. Granny Whitaker, what exactly... I'm not getting... Well, she seemed really nice. I... Blades, I've, you, you, I've, I've been wanting to find out, like, why, uh, why I'm me, you know? Yes, but Grizz, we don't know if it's just going to take your head off or your... As she said, they might. No, I'd be really careful. I look, but not too close. It don't burn my eyebrows. You don't make you so greedy all the time, Grizz. What? I'm not being greedy. I'm just... You know, you know, like I'm it's really. Uh, well, what it's I mean, it's me. mine. Uh, we're not going to go through this again, Ember. I would think we're established. It's mine. And it's before we go through this, boys, Granny Whitaker, would you be able to tell me what you've seen 
where your path mm. lies. My path is now to aid others. I am simply a, a directional sign, sitting on a forked road. I point this way, I point that way. That I'm trying to label your roads so that you'd find some way of navigating without a signpost you'd be lost granny the future that you show us here is it the future that must be or only the future that may be to quote a wise man hmm once you've seen the future, the future is then subject to change. This future, what you see, is what will be. But I cannot say it will be after you have witnessed it. Will you show me then? I shall. Tyra's very um, interested in this and like watching as it uh, sort of ramps up. He's, mm -hmm. he's got his notebook out. Okay, so in a way, she's sort of saying that there is this is the prediction of your future, but as soon as you see it, that's it. There's no guarantees anymore because yeah. you have that information and it changes everything just knowing it. So you can never really pin down the future, and you kind of experience that tire yourself. Who is going first? Because Guru seems like eager, he's already staring into the fire. Tara, you're intrigued and Daya has obviously politely asked Daya is, is 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 holding herself back she is absolutely desperate this, this mm. is why she came okay. she needs she wants to know oh, i'm sorry atara is not like trying to go first he's no, just eager fine, to yeah. see what's what's happening uh as as like granny Whitaker conducts her experiments Wait, is it okay if we look then yes yes you may look let us no. I'll stand next to Daya and say, uh, if you are worried about divination, I'll be right next to you. May we, may we see together? May, may I go with Grizz? This so is... that he's not alone. I had not been asked this before. Someone joining others in their vision? Hmm... I'm gonna. I, I had not thought of this myself. I'm gonna see if she can <laughs> do something for that. So one second. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, roll. Yeah, she wants. She wants Tyro with her, and also she wants to go to go with Grizz because she doesn't trust him not to run off and do something stupid. <laughs> um, okay, sure. I'm gonna try rolling this. And I will stand next okay. to Ember. All right. She says. It is within my power to have this shared vision. It seems you draw strength from one another. That is good. Yes, yes, you may join each other's vision. But, as I've said, these visions are physical. You will feel like you are there. If you experience pain, they will share that, whether it be emotional or physical. They will be almost as if they are you, feeling it. Perhaps if you experience it. Then... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, she says, well then, perhaps it'll draw a closer bond between you. Are you sure you're going to come with, Miss Dyer? What if there's like really bad things? I don't, I wouldn't, I don't want you to get her. Uh, Sarah Jane just messaged me. Apparently she lost audio. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, that's okay. Hmm. Does it okay. seem like uh, that Granny Whitaker, like, she seems confident that she can do this, but does it seem like, is, is her confidence well placed? Does it seem like she, uh, that, that she's correct in her belief that she has the skills to do this based on what Tyro knows about what is necessary to have people do shared visions and does doing so increase the sort of like danger level for anyone involved uh yeah can roll me another insight check uh 
Uh, I just want to be clear. I'm not so much asking like if she believes if she's right, but more like whether Tyro mm. thinks that like that 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 doing so would be um, not additionally harmful or dangerous relative to what we were doing before. Yeah. Um, okay. You can roll me uh, an Arcana check as well if you want. Oh wow, John. <laughs> okay. She seems she is confident in what she's doing. The only surprise is when it came that you could join together. I'm keenly aware that for you to kind of go on this journey, she is going to have to sort of spark it to begin with. And in a way, she is actually going to be there herself. And she did ah. say that if it got bad, she offered the way out. She said that she would help you leave the vision. And you're keenly aware that within the, that must mean she is there with you experiencing the vision. But um, it is not more dangerous. In fact, if anything, what she said about drawing strength from one another, leaning on each other, is actually 100% a, a good thing. If someone else is in the vision and they're trapped, they, they don't, or they, they forget that it's an illusion or just a vision, the other person will be able to pull them out, knowing that they, they could help them snap out of it. Likewise, if their mental capacity is, is too short to be able to endure the vision, then others can act as a, uh, a cushion to take that load to take the to take the stress and the weight of what's being witnessed so effectively you're a shared health pool nice like the bit at the end of um guardians of the galaxy where they're all yeah. holding hands and it's very right. cute yeah. <laughs> exactly <right. that. laughs> so this is 100 percent a beneficial effect if you want to join each other um, Staya, you guys i think are the most uh need of this. oh Mm. Yeah, sorry, well, we're gone. That's how I joined. So, Grizz with a boss. Uh, are you sure, Miss Daya? Uh, like, what if there's like something really bad I wouldn't, like, in, in like in what I see, and then I have to fight it, like, but then it hurts you, like, I don't want you, you to get hurt. Yes, but aren't we stronger together? Aren't we better if we fight together? Well, well yeah. I'm not as strong I'm as you. I'm worried but... about you. Like, I mean, fine, if, like, I don't know, I'm just, if only if you're sure. If you, if you will allow me to see, uh, your inner demons, then I would I would happily go with. To well, I hope there are demons in be there. beside you. <laughs> okay. Yes. He's right. a construct, anyways. Not like he, he probably will <laughs> not even see his own friggin'. Alright. Demon. Uh, Grizz. Gold. Is that borderline offensive? I feel like that might be borderline offensive. That's definitely uh, offensive. It's n There's no borderline. <laughs> I've learned to ignore him over the past few hours. He's just being really salty because, I don't know. Like, oh, he's, he's talking about, oh, oh, he got a greedy, Grizz. I'm like, what are you talking about? You're the one who got greedy trying to go after my gold. And I'm about to crack both of your heads together, so can we get on with you this? You mean, why my head? He's looking at like, oh, we're doing right in his mouth. See, Chris? Funny. See? All you do is cause problems. I kind of <laughs> just give Ember a clip because I'm close to him. Ah. Just clip around the ear. <laughs> Okay, so as you uh, do you that, you notice when you do that that the uh, the clip around the ear. You, normally, when when you give Ember a good little backhand, he, uh, you know, it burns a little. It's pretty hot up there. Uh, the flame is pretty pretty little little chilly in here. Uh, flame doesn't okay. seem to be as burning yeah. as warm. And... Interesting. Hmm. Okay, so and you're right. It is getting cold colder and colder at this point it feels like a numbing effect but your senses kind of beginning beginning to kind of shift they're not dulling as much as they are shifting to some somewhere else attuning to a future you a future use senses and uh, granny Whitaker sort of pushes the last 
steward into the fire and the the fires kind of flare up and they demand your attention oh by the way brandy which can be we we stop so Babayaga gave me this like because before all this happened <clears throat> i've been like basically why i'm here is like i'm trying to find out who i am and what i'm here to do like what my purpose in life is and all that and um Babayaga said that i should like we'll see you about, about my dreams but then yeah like i don't know if this will help and then Grizzle will present his uh, crystal she smiles and nods and goes i know chris i know almost like she already foresaw all of this and as she hands as you hand out this um this stone she takes it and begins to play you feel this cold like almost deathly cold hand uh, kind of grip around yours as she takes the stone from yours and then she places it in, within the fire and uh, she says I knew you would come I knew you were seeking answers I could sense your lost weary soul in the heart but let's see if we can illuminate some answers so Thyre is the first to sort of begin staring into the fire and there's a sort of a sense that there's a cold hand taking yours as well and pulling you closer in to said fire. Your vision is slowly filled with this flickering waving flame and eventually you feel your senses once again change to um, you feel like a soft kind of crunch of leaves under your feet. Let's change the music here. You is see this, trees. This is all Grizz's point of view? Oh, no, no, this is Dyer's. This is Dyer. Okay, I yeah. just, yeah. I thought I heard Dyer, but there's like, wait a minute, wasn't Grizz the one? Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. She's, you're like, Grizz is part of this. Is, are you all with Dyer at this point, or is it just specific people? I think we're all there. Okay. No, no, we're right. all in the room, but I was not trying to join it. You don't want to join in the room. Okay. okay. I thought okay. Tyra was... Dia looks scared, so Tyra's going to join her. Okay, gotcha. All right, so Tyra, you also sense this kind of pull, and as you're staring into the fire, it feels like you're just kind of falling into it. Um, but you're not being burnt or consumed. It feels like you're being taken somewhere. And you too feel the kind of crunch of leaves underneath underfoot and there is something in Dyer's hands they're carrying it they're carrying it like it's the most precious thing to them uh keeping it safe it's actually kind of wrapped up at this point but you can see the top top of it seems to be like a flask of some sort you can see this crystal glass and as she's hefting it, she's approaching some sort of um, shrine or or overlook. It's yeah, like a henge of some sort, and it's got this beautiful view of the stars. It's a place of nature. There is no there's no buildings or anything like that around here. But Daya, you recognise this place. This is home. You are coming up to one of the um observatories near your village where you, there would be many stargazers they would watch looking for any kind of change in constellations or or even more celestial bodies like other comets and there's a small little dais in the center of this henge and as you come closer to it you gently place this flask uh, taking away the, the wrappings of it as well. Though, as you're looking up, your vision shifts and warps slightly, almost like as a reminder, almost like as this is what it actually is. And as you look up, there is no stars in the sky. It's instead this kind of blank, black void. It's weird. Normally you see stars filled, brimming this 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 location 
In the flask, however, there is a glittering, dazzling spectacle. It's almost like someone has kind of poured all the stars into the flask. And as you're kind of placing it, positioning it, you're looking up. And there is an emotion attached to this. And it is the heavy cost that it took you to get this. This flask demanded a great payment. One, you feel you cannot go back. You cannot go back on, but also physically you cannot go back. Because as you kind of reach this top of this observatory area, you do see your village off in the distance. There are kind of torch lights of your people. And there's again another feeling, an emotion of dread and worry. Anticipation. Not just from you, but from your what you imagine your people are experiencing. You're kind of empathizing with them. But without more, any more hesitation, you see Dyer beginning to lift the lid of the flask. And there is also something nearby. It's kind of like fluttering around where Tyro is. In fact, you might be what you might be what's fluttering, Tyro, you're not sure. Because you shouldn't be here physically and die. If you look to your right, you wouldn't see Tyro. Instead, you sort of see this small sprite, this small little glowing uh, orb that's kind of hovering and bouncing next to you. And uh, you feel kind of an affirmation from her. And then as you pull off the lid, you see starlight pouring, like emptying from the flask, almost as if it was already upside down. And the stars begin to fill the night sky. Just brimming with this dazzling spectacle once again. You see everything returned. Everything that was in the flask in its kind of uh, in its solid state is then returned into its uh, constellation in the sky. And so with it, you see the comet suddenly burning bright, passing over your village. And there's, there's, there's a sense of accomplishment, but then there's this emotion of sadness, deep sadness. And I'd like you to roll a d10. Uh, okay. Um, The, the, the sadness is so heavy on your heart that you actually take five points of psychic damage and you want to return. There's this longing to go back to your people, but for some reason you can't. And what, as you try to reach out for that answer, it it's kind of blurry. It's still uncertain, perhaps. And as you step away from the the kind of stone hinge and this this dais. Um, you leave behind this kind of empty flask, and uh, this little bobbing light leads on, leading you back somewhere. Rather than going back in a full circle to where you began, you instead are led to somewhere else, some new task, some some other unknown future. And it's something that you're forcing yourself to do. There's a there's a, a kind of a flicker to the flame as it seems to like sh shift and change. You almost feel yourself pull out from the vision, but it seems to be only taking you somewhere else entirely. You're suddenly standing in front of a mirror. And as you observe your, your, your reflection, you realize you're wearing this kind of strange crown made of like black crystal. And you kind of go to feel where that crown is on your head, but you don't, you don't actually feel it. You only see it in your reflection. And as you kind of look around the room, trying to gain your bearings, no longer in this, in this forest or in some sort of bedroom, uh, 
Yes, there's like a double bed. There's these. There's a fireplace behind you, and there's a curtained, uh, like wall to the right. And you feel a sense of duty. Feel a sense of what's the word? A sense of payment that needs to be fulfilled. And as you look around, you are drawn to the mirror and you know what must be done. You kind of begin to step forward into the mirror. And as you do, your reflection merges with it such that you are now actually wearing the crown. And there's a long staircase descending on the other side. And as you take the first step, I'd like you to roll another d10. You take two points of psychic damage, and Tyra, you're experiencing this as well. You can see that there is a, a an amount of duress as she takes this first step down the staircase. And you're, you're feeling that heavy emotion as well, and at any point, if you want to try and take that away, you can. Whatever this first step was or meant, it's it's an emotional downward spiral, it feels. How and does Daya look like she's doing at this point? Well, I would say you can. I can tell her you. I can tell you she's on twenty-two HP, mechanically speaking. Uh, but. Oh, sorry. I mean, like how um, <laughs> how burdened or sort of Very emotionally burdened. damaged does she look at this point? She looks like she is heavily burdened. One hundred percent. This is something that she okay. knows she has to do. She hasn't. Doesn't feel like she has a choice in the matter. It's yeah. Just, Tyra will, uh, how, how does that work exactly? Like, what does, how, how does he sort of intercept or interpose or reassure to prevent the, the damage from occurring? It seems like each vision is your own, so only they are kind of experiencing it, but you're able to sort of buff it away the, uh, the actual pain of it. To what to what their physical mind is happening, not their physical mind, <laughs> their mentality. Basically, you're able to kind of stop their physical. God, how do I say this? The psychic damage. There's some sort of psychic assault on their mind. I see. They yeah, she to... will. Um, she sort of like girds himself and um, uh, erects a mental barrier to the extent that he can around himself and die. Okay. Yeah, there is. It's hard to explain physically, but you're there with her. She cannot perceive you, though. But it feels like every time there is this wind of emotion, this heavy burden, you're able to sort of there put up a magical barrier physically. Like, but this is also just happening mentally. Um, but if you kind of manifest it that way, then sure, it's kind of like your dome in a way, um, trying to like shield her. Regardless, as she takes the next few steps down. Um, I'd like you to actually make a perception check, Dara, within your own vision. Mm. It is a long, winding staircase. And the worst part about it is you're being distracted. As she takes her step away from the door, or what that was, it was a door, but it was, it was in the shape of the mirror to begin with. You start to see the steps disappearing behind you. You realize this is not only a a direction you have no choice in it is also a direction that you cannot go back from and as those stairs disappear they threaten to have you fall through if you don't continue on your path and i'd like you to roll 2d10 2d10 plus 3 okay it's only 5 points of psychic damage and if you want tara you can you can yeah, take I'll... I'll take yeah. half of that. All right. Tyra takes it instead. As you begin descending, the only thing you can see, Dyer, is shapes. At first, a square. Then the square seems to have, well, another six sides to it. It is some sort of cube. And as you're kind of tumbling towards it, you feel the steps kind of disappearing faster and faster you begin running kind of stumbling down the steps and as you kind of land into the bottom you almost trip 
and the, the, the crown falls off and rolls across the floor of this strange chamber. As it rolls across the floor, you see another shape. It's some sort of triangle. As you're getting to your feet, you see something picking up the crown. And it is Baba Yaga. She lifts it up and she looks at you with a kind of scornful expression at first, but then a sort of smile, almost like a a smug smile. And then she places the crown on her head and she points to your place at the tip of one of these triangles. And although you can't hear her words, you can see her mouthing something. So it's it's something like something like go to your place or stand where you belong. It's an order and you have no you have no will to fight against it. And you begin to head towards this step in the triangle. And as you do, Tara, there's another psychic assault coming, but it seems to be one from within Dyer. It seems to be as if she stepped into some sort of arcane ritual of some sorts. And you can see it, it is having a dreadful effect on their, their mentality. It is like not only transforming them, it's stealing from them. It is... It is just... The word. Yeah, it's, it's just stealing from Dyer. Whatever it is, it's stealing from their mind and from their being, from their very soul. Whatever it is. And it seems to be using Dyer for this ritual of some sorts. And in, in the other th uh, two points of the triangle, there is Baba Yaga and another figure who's kind of shrouded another uncertainty, perhaps, within the vision. In fact, all you would see is kind of like a flickering blue flame as it's trying to manifest something, but it can't. And uh, I'd like you to roll 3d10. <clears throat> Ouch, that hurts. Okay. And if you had not had Tyra with you, at this point, you'd be becoming unconscious. You would, it would be way too much to take. Uh, how much of this do you want to take, Tyra? Uh, I'm, I'm taking half on an ongoing basis. Okay, you're going to take half. All right. Uh, but just to be clear, I also took half of the last one, too. Okay, uh, so it was five, wasn't it? So you took three, so Di took two. Yep. Uh, yeah, I wasn't like editing Daya's character sheet or anything, if that's what you were. Okay. Um, okay, no, so I'm taking uh, 12 on this. Is that right? All right. Yeah, so I should be at 8. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. At this point, Daya, you feel as well, you're feeling this incredible um, sapping effect. It's like stealing away from your soul. You can pull out of this vision at this point. It is getting incredibly turbulent and you are able to pull out and you feel a cold hand on your shoulder. It feels like Granny Whitaker's presence is here as well. And she is offering for you to leave the vision. You've kind of already overcome it um, in a way. But you can ask, you can actually leave at any point during this vision. But what seems to be happening is some sort of dreadful ritual, like I've mentioned this triangle is part of some sort of rune, like a, a circle, but not a circle, but a, a triangle. It's really strange. It, it normally, when Tyro creates magical domes, he he draws them out. He he chalks them in a perfect circle, but this one is different. It's a weird type of of circle quotation marks. Whatever it is, Baba Yaga is asking a great deal from you, and you and you feel like you owe it to her. The whole time, this is something that you've chosen a path down. Regardless, if you want to leave right now, you can. Otherwise, I'll describe what happens. I want to keep going as, as far as I can without passing out. Okay. That's crazy. Or I guess until I pass out. All right. The vision oh, shit. Okay. begins to manifest something in the center of this triangle. 
a secondary cube. This one, much more intense. It seems to be filling, brimming with power. Power that it is taking from you. And Baba Yaga revels in it. Whatever is happening, it is storing and building up continuously. The cube begins to spin, as does your head and every sense of gravity in this chamber. Everything around you, the, the, the six walls of this cube, begin to shift and turn into this kind of chrome-like texture. It turns into like a mirror, and you're suddenly seeing everything is a warped reflection, a vision within a vision. This is going to get really trippy. But whatever this is, this cube in the center, is endless possibilities. And it is reflecting those onto the secondary chamber. Uh, you can roll an intelligence check, Tyro, as you're freaking witnessing this. And so can Dyer, because this is something really heady. Uh, 21, okay. 21. What the heck? So, a cube oh, within a I'm cube. I'm sorry, that I actually rolled a saving throw and not a check. Okay. Um, what so my, uh, my modifier would be plus five, so it would be a 22 instead. 22. Okay, you both rolled ridiculously well. So a cube within a cube, otherwise known as a four-dimensional object, a tesseract. The net of a cube within a four-dimensional space is being uh, used as some sort of focal point for some sort of ritual. And the walls of that that tesseract are becoming platforms in which to manifest said magic, said ritual. The warped realities and future possibilities are what Baba Yaga is trying to achieve. She's looking across the walls, picking from which reality to shape the world into. And then you see it, Dyer. There is one where there is your party and they are charging towards Baba Yaga, trying to stop the ritual. And before they get to her, you see Baba Yaga simply spin the cube, and that reality is no longer an issue. She looks to the right, and you see one where you have actually taken place of Baba Yaga, and instead there is two other individuals that you have conscripted to this thing. It seems like you are her predecessor in a weird way. Baba Yaga pondered this over a moment, and then brushes it aside. She's looking for something else. Something. And at this point, you're realizing you're seeing visions within a vision. It is probably the most traumatizing and heavy thing for your mind to cope with. I'm going to say you can roll me 4d10. Oh, God. This is... This, yeah, okay. yeah. You yeah. said you wanted to push on. I did want to push on. Yep. Oh, I'm down. God. So, Tyra's okay. taking half of that again. Half of it okay. again. Okay. That still has me at negative one points. Okay, so, so not, if that's the case, Dyer, you feel um, suddenly both hands on your shoulders pulling you away from the vision. There is something you see on Baba Yaga's face before you disappear from this vision. It is a look of revelation. It is a look of, of intense sort of um, excitement. She stops this kind of spinning, this spiraling, and grabs a hold of the, the wall, the vision, almost like she commands the reality to stop. And she begins to approach it, but as you're trying to look and see what reality she's shaping, your your vision blacks away. It kind of just burns up. You feel a cold flame suddenly wrap around your body and take you. And Tyro, you're also afraid of being pulled with this. As it is Dyer's vision, you're not able to stay within it. And uh, you two feel this cold fire kind of warp around you and pull you away. Um, and you're back in the chamber with the small flickering blue fire. And you feel a head rush. Everyone sees Dyer's eyes kind of roll back, their head tilt to the side, and she begins to slip off the stool. And Granny oh, Whitaker, Granny Whitaker is like, Catch her! Catch her! Yeah, oh, catch her. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. What the heck? Wow, wow! What's happened? She stands up from the log. Oh my. She. I tried to tell her. I tried to offer her out away. She kept pushing. Uh, I've never seen such determination in a vision before. Uh, Tyro, your nose uh, is bleeding. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You okay? 
Oh, it's fine. Just a, just a trifle. He'll sort You're of... sweating profusely. Well, it was a very stressful mission, but you learned so much. Uh, help her. She, she's fainting. Uh... I mean, that's not really my department, but... I'm going to stabilize her, because I yes. don't have anything. Go ahead. Roll a medicine. Do we have a healing potion to give her? It's okay. It you, you doesn't seem there are any physical wounds over her body. She's definitely been under some sort of mental attack. And as Rani Whitaker says, she's she sort of done this to herself. She's she had tried to offer Dyer a way out, but she pushed she pushed and she's she's definitely reached her limit at this point. But you are able to kind of like um hold her upright. Um, sort of like perhaps um just kind of <laughs> perhaps check that Check that she's still breathing. Yeah, uh, yeah. You open up her eyelids and start trying to like bring her around. Um, she is oh, I, I've got one. I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a push of healing. Okay, cool. You hand it over. Yeah. Okay, you can roll two d four plus two. Oh, you have a healing potion. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I was just like, just, shit, do I have one? Do I have rolling death save throws? Yeah, that's scary. No, no, Tana seems to be. I was going to get to that, but Tana was going to stabilize her from that 18. But if you want to bring her back to consciousness, this will definitely do the trick. Okay, Dai, you you feel a heavy weight kind of lifted off your shoulders only by <laughs> only by a few measurements, though. There is still this kind you of. Dyer? You too. Dyer, are you Dai, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Um, what the heck just happened? I'll just kind of like prop her back up on the stool. <laughs> I, should have got, I should have got with you. No, it was best best you didn't come. That was that was hard to watch. Tyro, How thank you. you. I, I couldn't feel you there, but I knew I knew I wasn't suffering as much as I needed to. She smiles and says... Uh, I'm glad I could be there for you. Let me I let am. me take a short rest, and I'll pay that back. But um, <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, that was. Um, <clears throat> she's gonna look at Granny Whitaker and kind of nod, and just out of respect, and go. That was, I think, what I wanted to see, what I needed to see. Um, you were fearless. I didn't know that your your future will be able to bite back at you like that. Well, we were warned, I suppose. Uh, you were, you were but I had... Um, I think I'm okay for now. Uh, I have some pocket bacon that I'm gonna... I'm just gonna nibble on here <laughs> in the okay. corner. Um, let me take a, a little bit of a rest while someone else goes for their turn and <clears throat> I'll, I'll go with you when you're, when you're ready. Uh, maybe uh, we should all, like, have, a, like, a little breather. Because we were pretty beat up from like the the, the the those things that pretended to be us. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know about sitting around here for too long, though. No, uh, uh, can I can I quickly just look around? Does the room look any darker? Does it look like uh, hmm. the shadows are closing in at all? No, this room is this cave is probably the most brightly lit cave you've ever seen. Okay, Every good. corner has a little tiny blue geode giving off a, a cold blue light. How long Actually, did that take, maybe... that whole vision? Uh, that whole vision? Ooh. Um, I'm gonna say a like, good... Like, for the, for the others in real time, I guess. Yeah, a good ten minutes, I would say, of you kind of just in this trance. Uh, maybe Granny... we catch our breath before we try this again, yeah. Uh, Grizz, you might be right. Yeah, it was about... It's at... a ten minute ritual, effectively. Yeah. Uh, I'll look at Granny Whitaker and say... Would you permit us to rest uh, from our from our battle before we try another one? By all means, yes. This is a place for quiet contemplation. Rest. Contemplation is just perhaps what we need now. Yes. Yeah, mechanically, a short rest would probably do us a lot of good here. Sure. Get our health back and yep. uh, you can go farther do. in the visions. Yeah, yeah. You can all gather around the fire. It is a soothing place, this cave. And you do feel at peace within it. Although, that vision was probably going to...